All right. Well, we're about to enter our Bible study this morning in Ephesians 5.5, 5, but before we do, we're going to allow a few moments of silent time where you can pray and represent yourself before the throne of grace. It's a time to use the rebound technique if needed. First John 1 John 1.9 tells us, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So let's bow our heads together for a few moments and I'll finish this out in a group prayer. Our Father God in heaven, we're delighted to have our freedom and be able to come together as Christians without persecution. We're thanking you for our military and we're praying for our military men and women who are fighting for that freedom around the world. We pray that you would build them up, encourage them, enable them to appre or to neutralize the enemies who uh, would destroy our freedom around the world. We pray for our police, men and women here inside America, that you would encourage them, enable them to apprehend the criminals who seek to destroy our freedom stateside. We pray for our leadership in America, that you would continue to raise up men who could guide our country by its constitution and thereby protect our freedom. We pray for our friends in Israel and their military, and we pray that they might be successful in defeating the enemy and winning their freedom. We pray for the people of Ukraine and Korea. We pray for our friends in the Philippines, Father, the ones in ministry. We pray that you would enable them to carry your word wherever it may be wanted. For our friends on the prayer list that are sick, we pray that you would heal them, whether it be by medicine or by miracle. For our friends who are in pain, we pray that you would relieve their pain, remind them of your grace, which is sufficient. For our friends who've lost loved ones, we pray that you be with them in their grief, remind them of your precious promises, which brings the peace that passes all understanding. We thank you and praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to take a look at our verse again in Ephesians 5.5. 5. And we're going to go back to the doctrine of the phallic cult, which we started last week. Paul says, for this you know, or you ought to know if you're learning. <clears throat> There's two words for knowing there. That no fornicator or unclean person, nor covetous man, this means pimps or prostitutes or those who are in it for greed or those who are in it for lust. Who is an idolater? So that tells us the origin of this person. They are into demonism. They're into demon worship. And they're into the phallic cult. Has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God? And so this means whether he's an unbeliever or whether he is a believer. When you get lost into reversionism, sexual reversionism here, you lose out on what God has provided for you in the way of blessings in time and rewards in eternity. So we begin to look at the doctrine of the phallic cult. Let's get this open correctly. And we saw last week, Genesis chapter 9, verse 20 to 25 is the origin, but we had, first of all, a definition. The phallic cult, the word, uh, the title phallic cult comes from the fallacies, which are the sex organs so this was the worship of sex and or fertility demonism if you will part of licentious reversionism and is referred to in these verses second corinthians 12 21 ephesians 4 19 5 5 3 5 revelation 2 14 and 
Revelations chapter 20 through 23. We saw in point two that the origin of the phallic cult is uncovered in the story of Canaan. Now, Canaan was the son of Ham, and uh, he was a perverted man, and he was twisted and devious, and we find out that he uh, committed atrocities with Noah as Noah was in a drunken state. Now, the question is, after we examine these uh, scripture here and we found what happened, is that part of demonism, is there a part of demonism that promotes the twisted and the degenerate and the demonic type of activity in this uh, type of idolatry? And I say there is. It is much too common occurrence in history uh, for this type of thing to happen. And we're going to find out that sexual sins of this nature are tied indefinitely to idolatry. Let's move on. We saw that the best attested operation of the phallic cult in the ancient world is that of the Canaanites who lived in the land before the Jews did. And so they were the lineage of Canaan as in their name. Who was a sexual deviant, if you will. He was a twisted man. And he was, uh, as an unbeliever, under the influence of demonism. We saw that the Canaanites were suffering under the four-generation curse, and that is the area of weakness in the sin nature is passed down to the prodigy. And we saw the answer of breaking the fourth-generation curse. The fourth-generation curse can be broken at any time. The power of the Word of God called Bible Doctrine. Now that may not seem like an astounding pronouncement to you, but to some it is. I heard a, a pastor, a black pastor, tell me in private that black men couldn't be faithful to their wives because their ancestors were used for breeding stock. In other words, he was telling me his uh, weakness in staying faithful to his wife, uh, they blamed that on their captors. And this was a pastor, supposedly studied doctrine. So what's the answer for this man? Bible doctrine is the power to overcome. The teaching from the Word of God is what brought man from barbarism, from heathenism, out of tribalism, out of killing and pillaging and rape and murder. The power of Bible doctrine can free you And see, that, that, that may not be sound like a powerful announcement to you, but it is. And every believer ought to know that you're not tied down to any certain kind of living because of what your father did or your ancestors did. You can be freed today. And by the way, your royalty... And royalty functions with class and distinction. And therefore, I pronounce you by the word of God free from former weaknesses, from former degeneracies of your ancestors. There you go. 
So we see that uh, Canaan, he left behind a heritage, and it was a uh, terrible one. And the Canaanites never overcame, and in fact, they promoted a demonistic lifestyle. The people who lived in Palestine before the Jews were Canaanites. You have to ask yourself a question, what kind of people were they? Why did God commend their complete extermination? He said not only kill the people that were there, they were demonized, but to also not even keep their animals, exterminate. And that is because they had trained some of their animals in bestiality. And they were not to keep any of them. Completely annihilate. Because they were a race of people who had gone completely mad. Just as you would kill a mad dog before it bit someone. So God ordered the complete extermination of the Canaanites. It wasn't accomplished. See, here, see, here's some ideology for you. If we begin to use capital punishment in America against criminals, crime would all but vanish. You take a violent criminal who has either abused a child or a woman and you begin to exterminate them through capital punishment. The abuses against women and children would plummet. You take someone who is caught importing um, drugs, illegal drugs, across the border and you begin to use capital punishment against these people because they're killing our children and our children uh, are being uh, tempted to take this dope and it begins a lifestyle of abuse. It never ends. We've got jails full of them. We begin to kill these people in capital punishment. They'll think twice before hauling that dope in here. You take people who are uh, violent uh, with weapons and you begin to kill them and when a young man looks at a gun, he says, I'm going to use this weapon lawfully, and I'm going to use it righteously. I'm not going to try to harm any per person with it. They, and see, crime drops. But liberalism says, give them another chance. And that's exactly what happened in Israel when they looked at the Canaanites and they looked at their livestock. They said, give them a chance. Well, it destroyed Israel. They didn't follow God's command. So, the immorality of the phallic cult is described in detail in Leviticus 18, 3 to 25, in which all types of sexual sins are described. The height of these things is human sacrifice, which always ends up happening in demonism. I'm going to read um, to you from Leviticus, and uh, we're going to find out what the end of the phallic cult was. And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech. And uh, the phallic cult was so terrible. And the Canaanite uh, demonism was so terrible that you you have to, first of all, I want to tell you, we're no better as a society, and I'm going to tell you how ter terrible these things were, because the, the ritual of sacrifice to Molech, which was demonism, demon worship, idolatry, part of the phallic call. The Canaanites passed down their rituals to the Jews. 
and they would meet in the high places of the mountains. And Satan always wants to be worshipped in the high places. You see in uh, the five I wills, I will ascend is one of them. And uh, they, sh they show up about nightfall and they have their special kinds of drink. And uh, they would begin to partake in, it was not only alcohol, but it was laced with certain uh, drugs that they had at the time. And it would uh, promote uh, psychotics. And then they would begin the dancing and the singing around the Ashra poles and the uh, altar to Baal or Molech. And a fire was built. And the altar to Molech had, it was a big uh, altar and it was a, it was a demon that had a cow head on it, and the arms were stretched out, and it had a grate that went across the arms, and a raging fire was built underneath it. And the uh, ritual began, and once the drugs and alcohol began to take effect, and the, uh, they reached an emotional and a ecstatic peak. In other words, their emotions through the dancing and the singing and the alcohol and the drugs, and they, they began to have an ecstatic experience it began to climax. They would take an infant, their own infant, and place it on the, the grate and burn it alive. And the screams from the infant would drive them into an ecstasy where they began to have sex with one another. And that was the ritual of human sacrifice to Molech. Now do you see why God told the Israelites, kill every one of them? That is why. Well, you may say that is awful. And it was. But I'm telling you right now, children are being left behind in the United States of America. And don't you forget our sins where we have parents that are belligerent on drugs and carried away by every kind of uh, thing they can think of besides raising their own children. They're left to the state and otherwise. And uh, it's a complete tragedy what we have going on. And uh, it is much easier to raise strong children, I think this is a quote from Douglas, it's much easier to raise strong children than it is to repair broken adults. And uh, our church is situated right behind the psychodiagnosis and the uh, place down here where you can buy the, not only the tobacco, but the THC-laced, drugs that people take people would much rather have the alternative than the real thing and the real thing is right here in the middle and so right here in Leviticus when uh, God gave the law to Israel he's saying don't you pick up don't pick up the practices of the Canaanites Thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech, neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. 
Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. This means no uh, homosexuality. It is abomination. Neither shall thou lie with any beast to defile thyself within, therewith. That is bestiality. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down thereto. It is confusion. Defile not yourselves in any of these things. For in all these things the nations are defiled, which I cast out before you. And the land is defiled. Therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it. And the land itself vomiteth out her inhabitants. In other words, this is the reason you are to go in and exterminate. He goes on and says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Again thou shalt say to the children of Israel, Whosoever he be of the children of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn in Israel, that giveth any of his seed unto Moloch, he shall surely be put to death. In other words, if you take part in this demonic practice, you're to, they're, they were to kill them, use capital punishment. And I believe you shouldn't go around doing these types of things, right? These peop the people of the land shall stone him with stones, and I will set my face against that man and will cut him off from among his people because he hath given up his seed unto Molech to defile my sanctuary and to profane my holy name. And so, look, those who abuse children ought to pay you hear me? And if the people of the land do anyways hide their eyes from that man, that means become liberal in their outlook. When he giveth of his seed unto Moloch and kill him not, then I will set my face against that man and against his family and will cut him off and all that go whoring after him. In other words, what's worse than the abuse? to turn a blind eye to it. And that's just like the Jews going to the gas chambers in Germany. The people knew what was going on and they turned a blind eye to it. You see, we have to speak out against those types of atrocity. And all that go whoring after him to commit whoredom with Molech from among their people. And the soul that turneth after such have familiar spirits. So the unbelievers were demon possessed. And after wizards. To go whoring after them. And you find out that the wizards were the ones who were the dopers. And they were the ones who took the different chemicals to produce um, their visions and trances and so on. I will even set my face against that soul and will cut him off from among his people. Sanctify yourselves. That means you're set apart. And be ye holy, for I am the Lord your God. So Israel is a special nation. If you look at the nations of the world, are they all equal? Well, if you go to a college classroom, they're going to tell you they are, but they're not. Israel is the only nation in the world which God has said will last forever. The Jew is the only race in the world which God says you can never kill them. They're different. And they were to separate from heathenism and this heathen practice of demonism. So, point four in Deuteronomy 12, 29-31, the phallic cult includes fornication, homosexuality, homosexuality, bestiality, and incest. He says, When the Lord thy God shall cut off the nations from before thee, whether thou goest to possess them, and thou secedest them, and dwellest in their land, take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them, after that they be destroyed from before thee. And thou inquire not after their gods, saying, 
How did these nations serve their gods? Even so I will do likewise. Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God. For every abomination to the Lord which he hateth have they done unto their gods. For even their sons and their daughters they have burnt in the fire to their gods. Now, I want to tell you, people try to make you feel guilty about living in America because they say, this land belonged to the natives. But once you begin to study what the natives believed, they were full of demonism. And they were full of uh, the black magic type of uh, thinking. They, they walking through the woods, and if a leaf blew the wrong way, they would turn around. And uh, they feared things that you wouldn't even imagine. Is the tree limb is broke. Whoop, that's a bad sign. We have to go home. And so it took the Christian to come to America and to be fearless like Joshua and conquer a, a new land. And when you, when you see how the natives, their favorite thing to do was go out and kill each other uh, instead of band together and uh, fight to keep, preserve their land, uh, you'll see why they lost their own country and uh, land and that God gave us this land to possess so that we could worship him in freedom. And... Uh, don't you ever feel bad about living here. And uh, this is a, a country that started out mostly Christian. Israel was to inhabit the land and eradicate the demon worshipers from it. Point five, behind all of this sexual activity as part of their worship is an actual system of doctrine or teaching. False doctrine or the doctrine of demons. The Canaanitish pantheon is like the Hellenistic pantheon. It has a supreme being. The Canaanites called their supreme being El. The Greeks called their Zeus. The Romans called, uh, Romans called Zeus Jupiter. Whether it is any of these, you have at the top a supreme being, and he is always the greatest of all sex athletes. He is always portrayed as seducing a goddess in heaven or women in the human race. So the trend of demonism flows through all cultures and they have different names for it. And uh, I love it. I mean, people get to study in religion and they try to make all of them the same and try to, you know. You, but see, here's the problem. 60% of all Bible prophecy has been fulfilled with fearful exactness. It better bring fear a little fear to you a little respect for the Bible. And the, the, see, the problem is is that there's still 40% yet to come. And you haven't read about it. The question is, are you going to be standing on the right side of history when the other 40% happens? And if you don't know Bible doctrine, it's very likely you'll be standing on the wrong side of history. So you better believe that the Bible is real. And Satan has a, a cheap substitute if you're willing to accept it. So point six, in the pantheon of the Phalic cult, we have the supreme being always has a wife. The wife of El is called Asherah. Zeus had a wife called Hera and so on. So the reason that the uh, the Greek pantheon and the Roman pantheon and the K 
Canaanite pantheon seems real is because it is. It is demon worship, and demons are real. If you don't believe it, you can read Genesis 6 and you'll see where many, the Greek pantheon where they came up with the uh, demigods, half man, half God, and you'll see them right in there. I have two sixes. You'll have to number your notes differently than mine. Obviously some points got added in there. El and his wife have a son called Baal. He becomes a counterfeit of Jesus Christ, just as Apollos is the son of Zeus and becomes a counterfeit of Jesus Christ. Baal provides rain for the crops, blessing in the economy of the ancient world, fertility for, for procreation. Sex, social sexual happiness implied. And this is where the believers at Ephesus faltered because the Greek mindset was wherever pleasure has a opportunity, it should be fulfilled even if it is a show, social setting. Point seven, which is eight. In the epic of Ugarit, now these were, uh, Ugarit is, is a town which is Syria now, north of Israel. It was a port city. And the inhabitants of that country uh, they were writers, and they left behind clay tablets, and they were, uh, they got overran and ransacked, and uh, they actually had a library that I don't know if, uh, they, they were, there were ruins that were discovered, and these tablets were there. And so uh, once they were translated, uh, we found a, uh, what their demon worship was like. In the epic of Ugarit, we have the story which is repeated in all the phallic cult systems of the people in the ancient world. Baal and Mot are great enemies. Mot is the god of death, and there is a fight between Baal and Mot. In this great struggle between the two, since Mot is the god of death, Mott overcomes Baal and kills him. Kills him. This explains the long, hot summer. Every year when summer comes around, it is hot because Baal is dead. This is a counterfeit of Christ on the cross. See, Satan always has a cheap substitute, which he's willing to peddle. Point eight, which is nine. Baal has a wife sister. She is always his wife, always his sister. It's always incest. So Baal's wife is called Aneth. She finds the body of Baal and brings him back to life. A counterfeit resurrection. The doctrine of demons. Point nine, which is ten. Aneth is the goddess of sex, warfare, murder, and the prosperity in agriculture. In every phallic cult in every part of the world, there is always an Aneth. When the Jews conquered the Canaanites on the battlefield, 
the Canaanites later conquered the Jews in the area of the Phalic cult. So they won the military battle and they lost the spiritual one. This is why we have so much information about the Phalic cult in the Old Testament. Now, if you don't believe me, all you have to do is use your Bible app and search Molech. And you'll see the different scriptures where God, he told the Jews over and over, do not sacrifice your children to Molech. You're going to see, here's what's funny. We have a society that's gone wild. They say over 20% of Americans use illegal uh, drugs. And uh, by the way, in the Bible, the, uh, the word sorcery, it's hidden there. But it's a translation of the word pharmakeia. And it meant illegal drugs psychedelics they say over 20 percent of americans are, the, are willing to do any type of illegal drugs and this was exactly the type of things that led the jews in to idol worship and the phallic cult and you can see the same trends among drug abuse in the Americans. They're leaving their children behind. They're falling through the cracks in our society. And uh, it's abuse. It's very real, still today. So, point 10, which is 11. The Philic cult includes the following factors. First of all, immorality of all kinds. You say, well, what is moral? Well, God gave us morality in the laws of divine establishment. Fornication, prostitution, homosexuality, etc. Leviticus 18, 3 through 25. Secondly, demonism. Leviticus 20, verse 6. Thirdly, idolatry related to the Phala cult always includes human sacrifice. Leviticus 21 through 5. All cults link in the phallic function with demons through idolatry. Estatics were always used in the ancient world. And the phallic cult reached its climax with human sacrifice. The parents would get worked up so they threw their children into the fire and have sex to the sound of their screams. So you better watch out. Even if you leave the dope out, you better watch out when you approach an emotional experience of an ecstatic nature. The emotions are good. They're the appreciator of the soul. Do not let them lead. Christianity today is off the tracks. You see the majority of the new cliquish churches have the lights turned down and have a full band to promote what? An emotional experience of an ecstatic nature. Man, they're one step away from going back to Israel. All they need is some dope. Right there in the church. You're not going to find any other pastors talking about this, by the way. Point four, the rejection of establishment authority under ecstatics. 
In other words, demonism also promoted the idea of no freedom, no private property, no life. In other words, we'll sacrifice your child next. It was also an idea under the life of a Greek because you may have a, a son or a daughter that is growing up and they're normal and they're fine and they're moral. And then along comes a, a priest from the temple of Aphrodite or a priestess from the temple of Aphrodite. And then they approach your son or your daughter saying, you look like the gods are calling you to service as a priestess in the temple of Aphrodite. I believe they're summoning you. And then they're going to take your child out your child out of their home, out from under your authority, and they're going to enter this priestly service. You see how the freedom is derailed there to raise your own children? These were the type of things that they were going through. So, fifthly, there was spiritual, social, and cultural degeneracy. Leviticus 20. 10 through 23. Now I want to take a break right here and we'll come back and finish the doctrine of the phallic cult. God's alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit, the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. All scriptures God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The man of God might be matured, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself an approved workman unto God who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We're looking at the doctrine of the phallic cult. We're going to move on. Point 11 in my points, maybe point 12 in yours, not sure. Idolatry demonism is the origin of abnormal sexual sins. Deuteronomy 12, 29 to 31. And we see where the Canaanite practice came from originally. And whether it was homosexuality, incest, bestiality, any of these things, it had its source in demonism. It doesn't take you long to study and find out that God created Adam and Eve and he placed them in the garden and it was Adam that examined every other form of created being and proclaimed there was no help meet made for him. No match. And then finally Jesus Christ put him in a deep sleep and snatched away the rib. I love that word, lakak. It sounds like a rib snatching away, doesn't it? It says, violently, he took the rib away. And he, Yatser, he formed the woman. He built her, Bana. And he presented her to Adam, Bo, the first wedding. And Adam exclaimed, finally, that means he finally found a match. Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, shall call her woman. And the first wedding gift was sex. And there were there were no uh, there was no offspring yet. And then uh, we find that uh, it gets distorted from there on out. So only in the garden under perfection. 
was it in the right state? And so we have the, uh, we have the mold, we have the make, we have the model of marriage being the right environment for sexual relations. And God, even in the Word of God, it, uh, it promotes the idea of sexual relations inside marriage and whatever the couple deems is right is right between them. It gets distorted any other way. So point 12, which is 13. Idolatry and the Phalic cult were responsible for the downtrend of client nation Israel. Documented in Isaiah 2, 8, Isaiah 18 through 20, Isaiah 21, 9, Isaiah 36, 18 to 20, Isaiah 37, 12 to 19. Jeremiah 3, 6 to 11, Jeremiah 2, 27 through 30, Jeremiah 7, 17 to 20, Jeremiah 17, 1 to 4, and Ezekiel 6, 4 through 6. If you've never read Lamentations, you need to read it and it, uh, please just try not to be too sad, but once you have the reality of the disintegration of the nation, and you see, you have a party atmosphere before, you have all of the festivities and the, uh, the elations of a society. And then you read Jeremiah in Lamentations. And what did he say? He said, my generation is laying dead in the streets. And their corpses are here. And yesterday they were having festivities. And today they're dead. Why? Jeremiah 32, 35. And they built the high places of Baal which are in the valley of the sun of Hinnom, to cause their sons and daughters to pass through the fire unto Molech, which I commanded them not. See, he was a prophet. Neither came it into my mind that they should do this abomination to cause Judah to sin. I'm going to tell you today, God didn't intend you to be on illegal dope. And uh, it's crazy. You say, well, it's not, that, it's, an, it's not that bad. Well, I'm telling you, it's an epidemic. Look, they say the, the wastewater that comes from, from Hot Springs to Malvern to here, you, there is a measurable amount of... of uh, Pharmacy that can be measured in the water, in the wastewater. Because the people are on so much stuff. It's crazy. See, why are we losing our nation? Is the question. Nobody can concentrate on what's actually happening. So, point 13, which is 14. The Philic cult is related to idolatry, our verse, Ephesians 5.5. 5. Thirteen is our closing point, by the way. We're gonna we're gonna finish this baby out today. Idolatry is the first subject of the first two commandments in the Decalogue. That's the Ten Commandments. Idolatry is the enemy of freedom. <clears throat> the <coughs> excuse me. The first commandment <clears throat> prohibits mental idolatry. Deuteronomy 5, verses 6 and 7. That's, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. The second prohibits overt idolatry. Deuteronomy 5, 8 through 10. Thou shalt make no graven image. 
It sounds pretty simple, but it sure did cause a mess. And we found out in our own minds we can get in trouble by having two things askew. First, our scale of values. What matters most to you? And secondly, our list of priorities. What are we, See, you're going to do exactly what you want to do is the issue. If you don't want to work, you're going to find a way out of it. You'll find an excuse not to be there. I'll receive text in the morning. It'll be Monday morning. I'll receive all of the excuses why they're not there. And I'll tell you right now, if you're having a hard time getting to work on Monday morning, why don't you just go camp out there on Sunday night? It's because the job is not on your list of priorities or your scale of values. It's just not, doesn't mean that much to you. And it's the same reason I'm always here on Sunday morning and Wednesday night. And you can't beat me away. I'm always here. I'm consistent. And what you do reflects these two things. Your scale of values is Bible doctrine number one. And your list of priorities is getting to Bible class anywhere near the top. Secondly, therefore, idolatry begins in the mind before there is overt idolatry. Judges 2, 10 through 13, Ezekiel 14, 7. And I'll tell you right now, emotional Christianity is off the rails, and there is no difference in giving your emotions into an ecstatic experience and it's the fornication of the emotional system of the human mind against God. And what, see, uh, once people, they get out and they have their fix during their so-called worship service, they're just delighted. Telling you, Christianity is off the, off the rails. What did they learn? Give me some doctrine you're going to carry out the door and apply to your life. So thirdly, scar tissue of the soul and cosmic involvement precedes the modus operandi of idolatry. That means you're tumbling backwards down the mountain of reversionism and you've gotten all the way to porosis Romans 1 18 to 25 should scare you it says God turned them over In other words, they wanted to get wayward and God let them go. And not only that, he just, he just encouraged them. If you want to go that away, be my guest. There you go. And so what's the issue? It's the issue that they can't hear spiritual concepts and pre spiritual precepts. They don't want any of it. So, fourthly, idolatry is also called spiritual adultery because it's unfaithfulness to the Lord. Jeremiah 3, 8 through 10, Ezekiel 16, 23 to 46, Ezekiel 23, 24 to 30, Revelation 17, <coughs> 1 through 5. You have to be careful, man. There's lots of idolatry going on today. And you say, how so? I haven't seen any totem poles. Well, Romans tells us that they will worship the created rather than the creator. And we just had Earth Day this past week. 
And there's nothing wrong with keeping the earth clean and taking care of your part. I'm telling you, we're not all... In Arkansas, you've got to do more than that if you're going to take care of your part. You've got to beat back the poison ivy, the ticks, the chiggers, and everything else that wants to take over. You've got to do some work. you got to tend the vine, see? But watch out. Don't worship the created rather than the creator. It even says in Revelation when God's shaking the foundations of the earth and all the unbelievers are scared. They called for the earth to save them. So Earth Day is going to continue. Even though in the worship of the planet itself, even though the Bible says that everything you see is going to pass away with a fervent heat and a loud noise, they'll continue to worship the created. Point five, idolatry is also the basis for contacting demons coming under demon influence or demon possession. Zechariah 10.2 We should note that the believer can only be under demon influence through false doctrine. He cannot be demon possessed. That means that once you're born again, you can never lose your salvation and God the Holy Spirit seals you. If you were a demon looking at different members of the human race, you would be readily able to identify those who were born again. And that once again means we're not all in the same boat. Believers are headed to heaven whether they want to go or not. But, while you're in this life, you can come under false doctrine and demon influence. So sixthly, idolatry is called the devil's communion table in 1 Corinthians 10, 19-21. Communion is remembrance. And this is where the Doctrine of demons comes in where you remember the false doctrines. You got to be careful that you don't fall into ritualism too. The Catholicism in uh, the Philippines is big, and you say uh, you get in the you vicinity of somebody. You say, "Are are you Christian?" They say, "No, I'm Catholic." They don't even relate. Catholicism to Christianity. And once you watch a few of them, you'll know why, because it's heavy on the ritualism and very light on doctrine. And they light the candles and they do the prayers and they got the smoky thing on the chain and they got the, you know, I don't know what all it is, up and down on the knees. Tons of ritualism. And they, well, they get to missing it too, their remembrance. So seventhly, idolatry motivates the entire realm of sexual sins. Therefore, idolatry is related to the phallic cult. Ezekiel 22, 3-18, Ezekiel 23, 37-39. Well, we're here to fight against such things. I am anyway. I'm telling you our sons and daughters are falling by the wayside under these things. It's not only, see, they get out there in the party atmosphere and before you know it, they're caught up and they get caught up into drug abuse and carried away under these things. So the fight against the phallic cult and reversionism and idolatry is real. It's not just a biblical 
thing is going on in our society today. And you say, well, what? How do you identify these things? And I'll tell you, anywhere you see children falling by the wayside and being left behind, that is the end result. So what, what, so then you say, well, how do we do it right, Brad? Establishment truth says one man, one woman. Raising children under equal parts love and discipline in a home. That's what the Bible proclaims is right and good. And it's much easier to raise strong children than it is to repair damaged adults. By the way, how are we going to fight an enemy if we have damaged adults? We can't. We're defenseless. Okay, I want to thank you for your attention and attendance, and we'll move on next week to verse 6 in Ephesians 5. I'm going to pray with you, and we'll uh, do a dismissal. Our Father God in heaven, we thank you that you have alerted us to these things so that we can be privy and not fall into the trap of demonism and idolatry. We thank you and praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.